Walk through the remains of any medieval settlement and you'll notice a remarkable pattern. Timber beams, posts and planks that should have rotted centuries ago are often still structurally sound. In England, Norway, Germany and across Scandinavia, wooden structures have endured storms, floods and centuries of moisture without the benefit of modern sealants, paints or chemical treatments. For the first minute, think about that. Structures built hundreds of years ago, surviving the elements better than much of what we treat with synthetic products today. How did medieval engineers accomplish this? Their methods weren't accidental. They relied on observation, material knowledge and ingenious techniques that maximised the natural durability of wood. Understanding their approach gives us practical lessons we can apply even in the modern world, whether for historical reconstruction, homestead projects, or long-lasting outdoor builds. They began by selecting the right wood for the right application. Medieval builders understood that not all timber is created equal. Heartwood, the dense inner part of the tree, contains natural resins and tannins that repel moisture and resist decay. Species such as oak, larch, pine and chestnut were chosen strategically, depending on availability and purpose. Builders also timed harvests carefully. Trees felled during winter or early spring had lower sap content, making the wood less hospitable to fungi and insects. For anyone working with wood today, the lesson is clear. Start with the material nature intended to resist decay. Slow-grown, dense heartwood provides a natural advantage, reducing the need for chemical preservatives. Even small projects like garden beds or fencing benefit from selecting durable species at the right stage of harvest. Selection alone wasn't enough. Medieval carpenters paid careful attention to how wood was cut and shaped. Beams were often split along the grain rather than sawn across it, preserving the natural fibres that resist water penetration. Posts and beams were sometimes tapered or rounded at the ends to allow water to run off instead of pooling. This minimised the time moisture remained in contact with the wood, a key factor in preventing rot. Modern builders can, you know, replicate this by splitting boards along the grain where possible and designing outdoor structures with rounded tops or subtle slopes. Even small adjustments in how water interacts with timber can honestly dramatically increase longevity, echoing centuries-old techniques. Medieval engineers rarely used timber immediately after felling. Instead, beams and planks were air-dried for months, sometimes even years, in ventilated covered storage. This slow drying process allowed internal moisture to escape evenly, which reduced stress and shrinkage that leads to cracking. It also made the wood much less inviting to fungi, which, well, thrive in wet, unstable timber. One of the most sophisticated medieval techniques involved controlled surface heating. Timber was exposed to embers or low heat to harden the surface and drive out moisture, a process that reduces sugar's fungi feed on and creates a natural semi-carbonized barrier. While modern builders often overlook this, it was in fact critical in areas exposed to ground contact or rain. After heating, medieval craftsmen often applied natural oils, fats or resins while the wood was still warm. 
Pine tar, fish oil, and rendered animal fats penetrated the open grain, sealing it against moisture. The combination of heat and natural sealing agents created a wood surface resistant to decay far more effectively than a mere coating applied cold. Medieval engineers didn't rely solely on material treatment. Structural design was equally important. Beams and posts were often elevated on stones or gravel footings to prevent direct soil contact. Roofs extended beyond walls to shield timber from rain. Floors were raised above the ground to allow airflow underneath. This approach reduced prolonged moisture exposure, the primary cause of rot, demonstrating that clever design works hand-in-hand -hand with material preparation. The effectiveness of these methods is proven by surviving medieval structures. From stave churches in Norway to timber-framed barns in Germany and England, centuries-old wooden structures demonstrate the longevity of these techniques. Posts, beams and boards that were harvested carefully, shaped thoughtfully, dried slowly and treated with heat and natural oils are still sound. This evidence proves that proper selection, preparation and design often outperform modern chemical treatments in real-world conditions. Modern builders can revive these principles to create wood that lasts. The lessons from medieval engineering are simple yet powerful. Start with naturally durable wood. Shape it to shed water. Season it slowly. Apply gentle heat and natural sealing agents and design structures to avoid prolonged moisture exposure. This combination produces timber that can survive decades or centuries without modern sealants. Medieval engineers understood that longevity comes not from shortcuts, but from observing nature, respecting the material, and applying practical science long before the term existed. For anyone building with wood today, whether for historical reconstruction, outdoor projects, or sustainable homesteads, these techniques are still highly relevant. If you want more insights into ancient building wisdom that still outperforms modern methods, subscribe to Relic Logic and share this video with fellow enthusiasts. History isn't just something to admire. It's a source of practical knowledge that can help us build smarter, longer-lasting structures today.